Good morning, Kelly Fab here, and today we are gonna be doing a loose powder foundation, like how to. I've gotten a few requests here on YouTube, on my Instagram, and at my job, at my work, of people asking me how I apply powder foundation, since I mention it all the time on my videos, that that's pretty much what I wear is powder foundation, unless I'm trying out other foundations, or I'm just in the mood to do liquid foundation, so I am gonna do my how-to powder foundation routine. I'm planning on doing one side of my face here as like a very light coverage and then my other side of my face that's got a lot of breakouts currently on it because we love the breakouts. Anyways, this side of my face I'm going to do a high coverage or a more full coverage foundation routine that I've been doing and just kind of show you guys the fact that you know powder foundation isn't limited because it's powder. I feel like I can use a powder foundation that I really enjoy and I can get a super light everyday fresh coverage where it's just just enough makeup to cover up just these little bit of red spots or I can put it on full coverage and make it so you can't even see my freckles. So yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing today. I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope it's helpful for you. I plan on explaining every single step that I do to make it easier for you if you plan on either trying or if you have powder foundation that you haven't used and you want to use in a better way. I hope this helps you and yeah, let's just get right into it. I am going to show you my skincare that I use as well because I feel like skincare is a very, very important step to powder foundation because it is a powder foundation. It's not liquid, so it's not like it's drying or wet. It's just powder foundation. So I feel like in that sense, skincare is super important in this case. So let's just get right into it. And like I said, I'm gonna start with skincare and then we'll go right to the powder foundation application. Okay, so first, obviously I don't have any makeup on right now. Like I said, I haven't even done most of my skincare yet. So right after my shower, I actually put on this L'Oreal Hydra Fresh Toner and I put it all over my face. So this is what I did first. And I use this one specifically because it's very, very hydrating. In the winter time, my skin is very dry and it's really unfortunate. By the way, my lips are like glowing because I have a lip treatment on right now. My lips have been very dry as well. So if you guys are noticing my lips like <laughs> glowing in this, that is why. Next, I'm gonna put on a hydrating moisturizer and I have been using the Paracomb MD H2 Elemental Energy Hydrating Cloud Cream. You don't have to use this one specifically. Use any kind of hydrating primer or hydrating moisturizer, actually. And me personally, if I was gonna recommend any kind of moisturizer that I know I can use any time of the year, whether I have dry skin or oily skin, cause I do have combination skin, it's dry in the winter and it is oily in the summer. So if I was to recommend one moisturizer forever, like for my entire year, of usage of moisturizer, I would recommend the Belief True Cream Aqua Bomb. That one is my absolute favorite. You guys have heard me rave about that on my channel before and seen it in empties. I have a full size right now that I'm working on and I love it. It's the best. Like it's the one that's the most consistent for me. It's the one that I can count on and yeah, so if I was to recommend just one single moisturizer for the entire year, if you have combination skin, that's what I would recommend because it's lightweight in the summertime when I'm oily and it's moisturizing in the wintertime when I'm dry. So it's just like the perfect combination. I love it. So as you guys saw, I put a fair amount of moisturizer on my face. It usually takes a couple minutes to dry down, which is fine because, you know, I just kind of pick out what I'm gonna use for the day. So another thing that I sometimes do and sometimes don't, depending on how dry my skin is, my skin is extremely dry today, so I'm gonna use a facial oil and I'm gonna use the Tarte Maracuja oil. This is just a sample that I got and I've really been enjoying it. I do not use this all over my face. It's too oily. Like I said, I have combination skin, so it changes from dry to oily very quickly if I make my skin too oily. Does that make sense? I hope so. So basically I will do like the tiniest little drop on my finger 
like not even a drop I just kind of get whatever's on the outside of the tube which is why it's lasting me so long and I will get specific targeted areas for my dry spots my dry spots are along my hairline here around my nose right here in my eyes and then occasionally I get the dryness around the sides of my cheeks. So those are the places I am going to get this oil on and I just kind of dab it in. I don't do it enough where you can like see oiliness, if that makes sense. But I just kind of do enough where you can't see my dry skin anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna put my hair up so you guys can have a better look at application. The loose powder foundation that I am going to be using today is from Bare Minerals. You guys know that this is one of my absolute favorites and this is the one that has the best coverage for lightweight coverage and for full coverage. So this one's the one that I can definitely sheer out and make it super lightweight, super natural looking on the skin, or I can build it up to a more full, full coverage. Like I said, I'm going to build up this side for, for more full coverage because I do have a couple breakouts on this side. And then my other side, I am going to do only light, natural coverage. And then eventually I'll just make my skin all even. But that way you guys can really see how it looks the two different ways. So now that my oil has kind of dried down and my um, moisturizer has dried down, I'm going to use a primer. I'm going to use the Becca First Light Priming Filter. It is very hydrating for me. So once again, I'm using a very hydrating product. And this primer is actually in my project pan and I've really been enjoying it. It's literally one of my favorites. I think, oh yeah, I did. I put it in my product favorites for... Uh, January of 2018 so if you guys want to check out that video I can link it down below but I put quite a bit of primer on almost so that my face feels wet I know it might seem excessive with the amount of hydration and moisture that I'm putting on my face but trust me it makes a difference when using powder foundation I think it makes a difference when I use liquid foundation too that my skin is hydrated and you know the lines are more filled in stuff like that and I just I enjoy my skin feeling fresh and when my skin is hydrated and not oily but hydrated my skin feels so much fresher and just better in general so yeah I just I just spread that all over in the backup first light priming filter it dries extremely quickly so I feel like I'm ready to go with foundation right now. So for powder foundation, I recommend a brush for sure. Do not use a beauty blender for a loose powder foundation or for a powder foundation pressed. Um, I just, I don't recommend that at all. So my two favorite brushes are the IT Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush. I got this this past year and I love this. It's very, very dense but very soft and it's easy to press in. And all the bristles are the slightest bit domed here. So when you press it in, you really get a good press in the center. So I really do like this brush. But if you're looking for a brush right now that you can buy right now, because that one's not available anymore. I think they bring it back out every year, but it's not available right now. So if you're looking for another good brush that you can find at Ulta or on the Morphe website, it is from Morphe, obviously, and it is the M439 brush, and it's the same type of thing. It is a very dense brush. It is slightly domed, and it's rounded. So this one just doesn't have the heart shape that this Love is the Foundation brush does. This one just has it completely rounded and they do the exact same thing. So before I got this one, I was using this one and when this one's too dirty, I go to this one. I just like this one a lot. But anyways, this one is a fantastic one. I definitely recommend this if you're looking for one. But yeah, you're just looking for a dense, soft, slightly domed brush that has a little bit of movement. Not too much movement, just a little bit of movement. So these are the two brushes that I recommend. This one you can only get at certain times a year. This one you can get anytime. It matters what kind of tools you use and it matters how your face is hydrated. And it matters for these types of things to make your foundation look the best you can possibly make it look. And for me, when I do powder foundation, this is just what I do. But for me, it's just routine. I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, and then I'm ready. For other people that are learning how to use loose powder foundation or for people that just don't really use it in general and just want to just see what it's like, 
then I feel like it's important to, you know, bring up all these steps and show you the order in which I do things as well. So yes. Okay. That's enough. So the color of the Bare Minerals, this is the original powder foundation, not any of the other kinds. This is just the original powder foundation. It does have an SPF of 15, which is fantastic. What I do is I put a little bit here in the top part. It does have a sifter, so you can close the sifter. But what I end up doing is I put it in the lid. So I will just show you guys. I put quite a bit. I, prob I put way more than I need just because of what I do and how I do it. So I have quite a bit in the lid here and I just kind of go like this and spread it out throughout the whole lid. And then I'm gonna use my Love is the Foundation brush and what I do is I just literally dip it in there and I make sure all the sides are nice and evenly coated. And then you can see I have quite a bit on my brush here which is way too much to put on your face. Do not put it on your face like this and then I tap it off like this quite a few times so that when I'm done tapping it, nothing else falls off. So if you turn it different ways, it'll tap off more. This is important if you're looking for a very lightweight coverage. You would tap off as much as you possibly can, not rubbing it off, tapping it off for a very lightweight coverage foundation. If you're looking for a little bit denser, heavier foundation, then I wouldn't tap off as much. So now what I do, and I'm gonna start with the lightweight side first, I just take my brush and I just press it in my face. So I just kind of go slow at first because you have a lot of foundation on your brush at first and then I just kind of tap it in. And then by my ear and by my jaw, I rub it down because I want it to sheer out more so that it blends into my face better. So I'm going to come up close to the camera here and show you guys the difference between my very light coverage and then my no coverage as of right now. Uh, you can see it a little bit more on my cheeks and my nose because that's where I started. Wherever you start with the foundation is where you're going to have obviously the most coverage. It's not like liquid foundation where you can just put a glob here and then go like that. It's always where you start and then you shear it out to the rest. So typically I'll do a cheek, another cheek, a forehead, and a chin neck. That's the four places that I put the mass on. So like I'll dip my brush four different times, put one cheek, and then shear it out. And then I'll do the other cheek, shear that one out. Do the forehead, shear that out. And then do the chin and shear it out down. So that's the typical way that I'll do that. But I just wanted to show you what my natural coverage would look like, and this is how it looks. See how I have a slightly glowy finish too? It's so nice. This side, you can tell I'm a little bit glowy just because the moisturizer, but I have no coverage. This side is glowy on my highlighted points with coverage. So this is just a very natural side of coverage that I would do. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna dip it in and I'm going to tap off my brush the exact same way, but this time I'm gonna leave a little bit more product on there because I am done with this side. This side's totally, I'm totally happy with that natural coverage foundation. That's what I'll do if I'm running out of the door to work. I'll just put tiny, tiny bit on and then go. Here I have my brush loaded again, and then I'm gonna start in the same spot the exact same way. So I'm gonna tap it in and I'm gonna shear it out, same exact way. I'm gonna rub it by my ear and rub it by my neck. So now, because I'm looking for more full coverage on this side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my brush. Dip it in, tap it off. I have my brush loaded again, and I'm gonna do my forehead now. See how much coverage those two little like taps in give? Obviously, I can't leave it like that. But, then I'm gonna shear it out. 
And then by my hairline, I typically do a little bit of rubbing so that it kind of blends into my hairline because I don't want like a line of foundation and then my hairline, it just looks a little weird for me. And by my eye, From here, I'll look at any extra little tiny spots, like my little redness that I had here, it's pretty much gone, but what you can do is tap your, I tap my pinky, into the foundation, and then I just put it on that spot specifically, and I just tap it in with my finger, and then it's like completely gone. That's my favorite way of doing it, so that I'm not mixing any foundations, I'm not doing liquid concealer, liquid foundation, powder foundation, loose powder, I just, I don't like doing all that. I like to have a simple, easy routine, something I can do quick and easy, and I just, I love this. So now I'm gonna show you a close up of my forehead, split in half, this is the high coverage side, this is the natural side. I don't know if you guys can really tell a difference, but I can definitely tell a difference in person. And so same thing, this is my low coverage. You can definitely tell my freckles under my eyes in here. And look, you can barely see them over here. So definitely a difference. I have that freckle here and here. I don't think I have any on the eye there, but you can see them very clearly and defined there. And you can see how much lighter my skin looks as opposed to this side. That redness there is like completely gone. My nose, you can definitely see freckles on this side, not as much on that side. My chin, I would like a little bit more coverage typically here on the end of my chin, but that's okay. You can definitely still see my little moles and freckles here and my little freckle there. And then this side you cannot see as much. So yeah, that is all I do for powder foundation. And then what I'll end up doing occasionally. So depends on how I'm feeling and how dry my skin is. If my skin is exceptionally dry, and I mean like exceptionally dry, I will usually set my powder foundation first before I go ahead and put contour, bronzer, blush, and highlight on. So I like to set it with the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. It's a very, very gentle mist. It doesn't affect my powder foundation at all. And it looks great and nice and glowy. And then when I put those other products on top, they go in and they sit on the skin so nicely. So that's if I'm feeling exceptionally dry. If I'm not feeling exceptionally dry and I'm kind of like I am today where I moisturize very, very well and I feel good about my skin, then I'll just go ahead with the rest of my routine. I'll just do my contour, bronzer, blush, highlight, do my eyes and then I am done for the day. So something I will tell you guys is that I always set my makeup when I wear a powder foundation no matter what. So typically I set my makeup anyways, but on powder foundation days, I especially like to set my makeup. So even if I was just running out of the door like this, put a little mascara on and that's all I was wearing, I would still set my face with a setting spray. I like the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray, but I just used that one up. So I'm working on the Maybelline Master Fix by Studio, by Face Studio, and it is the Wear Boosting setting spray. This one feels the exact same as the Urban Decay, but it's just a little bit more wet when I spray it on the face. So if I'm dry, once again, I will spray it closer to my face, and if I am very moisturized and hyd hydrated, then I will spray it further away from my face so that it's not so wet when it goes on. That was the application. It's so easy. People are afraid of some reason of using loose powder foundation. It does get a little messy. I mean, it gets messy. It's loose powder, so it's definitely gonna get a little bit messy, but the messiness, in my opinion, is the only con of loose powder foundation. It travels well. It doesn't matter if it gets all over the container. It's going to anyways. It's a loose powder. You have to remember, any kind of loose powder is gonna do the same exact thing. So I did put a few notes on my phone of the pros and the cons of loose powder foundation and I just want to go through them really quick with you guys because I was thinking about it this morning and I was like I have to write these down so I can remember them all so like I said the only con the only con and I was sitting there thinking like what don't I like about loose powder foundation the only con that I don't like is that it's messy it's a little messy and you have to be able to deal with that messy all I do is I keep it in the lid and when I'm done with it I pour it right back in and put the lid on. I wipe up the little bit that I got on my counter and I'm done. 
So that is literally the only con that I've been able to find for loose powder foundation for myself personally. So I have seven pros for you guys, which is crazy that I have so many pros and not very many cons. So let me go over those with you. So first of all, for loose powder foundation, it doesn't oxidize. That means that it doesn't change the color into a darker color once you put it on. The color that you see here in the container is the color that you get, which is really, really nice because you can perfectly match your color and it's not gonna change on you. It's not gonna look any different. So you guys know that I was using a darker one. I typically use number 12 in this loose powder foundation, but that's when I had a little bit of tan in the summertime. I had to switch over to light beige 09 because my skin, it was looking too dark. It was looking like I went to the tanning salon. It didn't look good. So I just changed my shade and it was perfect. By the way, this powder foundation has the best color range as well. If you look online, they describe the colors perfectly. So anyways, let me keep going. So on top of the fact that it does not oxidize like liquid foundation usually does, not all of them, but a lot of them do. In my opinion, it is much quicker to apply. So I don't have to wet a beauty blender. I don't have to make sure every tiny little end piece is blended in because with the powder foundation, it'll blend itself. With the liquid foundation, it takes me forever to make sure everything is perfectly covered before I set it in any way. Because if you do, then you it's just so much harder to work with. So it's much quicker to apply, that's my number two. Number three is that it has easily buildable coverage. So you guys saw how I have a very natural finish over here and I have a more full coverage finish over here. I did that in like two seconds. It took me almost the same amount of time to put this side of my face on as it did this side of my foundation. So <laughs> building the coverage, as long as you have a loose powder foundation that you can build its coverage, it's so easy. You just put on an extra layer. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't sink into anywhere because your face is moisturized. It just looks great. And it just gives you the more coverage. Like I was saying, I have those little breakouts that were red right here and I have redness on my forehead and my chin. You can't see any of that now. It looks great. I'm just saying. So number four is that it's very quick and easy to reapply or touch up. So throughout the day when I'm at work, I'm blowing my nose. It's the winter time in Michigan. We're getting like 14 inches today, by the way. I can just like look out the window and it's like snowing like crazy. <sighs> Gotta love Michigan. Anyways, so I am blowing my nose like crazy all day at work and at home. And then for some reason, my chin always rubs off during the day. I think it's because I just like sit like this or whatever, or I'm itching or whatever it is. So typically I have to reapply on my chin and my nose and usually right here. And it's so easy to reapply. You just put the tiniest bit on your brush, Put it on your chin, on your nose, on your forehead to just touch up that little spot and it, you're good to go, you're done. Liquid foundation is so much more difficult to reapply because you have to make sure that that coverage matches the other coverage of your skin and you have to reset it, re-go over it with a powder. It's just obnoxious. So my reason number five is that it typically lasts longer for me than liquid foundation does. So liquid foundation breaks up really bad for me around my chin, my nose, right in here, and then my hairline, which is a lot of my face. Let's be real. I mean, the places that it doesn't break up as much is on my cheeks and like the main part of my forehead. So the places that it does break up on me is so much of my face that I can't deal with it. Powder foundation does not break up at all on my face. Yes, it fades away, but like I said, it's super easy to retouch up and just re-pat over. And if you don't have a brush with you, literally, I use my pinky and I touch over and then I swipe it away and it's perfect. It's so much better <laughs> than liquid foundation. And like I said, it just lasts all day long especially if I remember to set my face which sometimes I don't but if I remember to set my face like like I should do it will last me all day it'll last me 12 hours 14 hours it lasted me 16 hours of work the other day and it looked great so I have no complaints over the lasting power of powder foundation 
Number six is the fact that I don't have to wet a beauty blender, a blending sponge, whatever you want to call them, and I don't have to get my brush all wet and nasty because when I use liquid foundation with a brush, I typically want to wash it immediately after because it grosses me out. Same thing with my beauty blender. I like to clean them right away because just looking at them dirty, just, I don't know, I don't know, I just don't like it. And the fact that I have to go in the bathroom, wet it, make sure it's clean, and then rinse it out or, you know, squeegee it out so it's not super wet, make sure it's the right, you know, bounciness and consistency for me. It's just obnoxious. I just, I don't like doing it. I love doing this. It's so easy. And then when I clean this, it's clean and it works well for about a month. I clean them more often than that, but I'm just saying like if I don't have time to clean my brushes, I can use my powder foundation brush for about a month. My liquid foundation brush, I can only use it one time and then I have to clean it. I can't handle it because if it's got the nasty liquid, I just, I don't know. I can't handle the liquid foundation on my brush being there. The final pro that I have for using loose powder foundations is the fact that it's super simple to spot conceal. So you guys saw already that I just put my pinky on that red spot there and I spot concealed it perfectly for me. I don't need high coverage spot concealing, but you can get high coverage spot concealing if you need it or want it. So that's what I do. I just tap my finger in here or if I have like a lot of redness on my cheek, I'll just get an extra brush worth and just kind of dab it in and it just covers it so perfectly. I cannot say enough good things about loose powder foundation, especially the Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation. No, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. This is just the one that I've been using for the longest and the one that I've loved the most. I've tried out so many loose powder foundations and this is the one that I always go back to because it's the best. And once you find something like this that works so well and so quickly and so easily, and it just makes my makeup routine so much faster and so much more enjoyable because every time I put this foundation on, it looks good. It, I mean, not even just good, it looks great every time. Now when I use liquid foundations or I use a different type of powder foundation, I'm just not sure. You know, like when you put it on, you're like, okay, I think my skin looks pretty good today. And then, you know, a couple hours later and you're like, holy crap, have I been walking around like this all day? Or you see yourself in natural lighting and you're like, what? What am I wearing? I just, I don't know. Every time I wear this loose powder foundation, I just, I feel so much better about myself. I feel like I'm presentable. I look great. And I'm not self-conscious about any redness or if I do have breakouts like I do right now, I feel fine about it because I know they're covered properly and they're going to be covered properly for a long amount of time. And yeah, I, I mean, I just, like I said, I can't say enough good things about loose powder foundation. And I hope that this helped you guys in some way, shape, or form. I knew this was going to be a slightly longer video because I really wanted to explain some of the things that I was doing and why I was doing it because I felt that they were very important. But if you guys end up trying the loose powder foundation or if you end up trying the Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation, let me know how it goes because I would love to know some of your opinions and see if this video actually helped you in some way. And also, if you have any loose powder foundation recommendations that you have for me personally, let me know in the comments below and like link it if you want. If it's like from Sephora or Ulta, I would love to check out some other ones. To be completely honest, I'll probably always go back to the bare minerals. I haven't found anything that's better. But if you guys know of something that you really, really enjoy, link it down below for me and I will be sure to check it out. But I hope this video was helpful and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.